Welcome everyone. My name is Joel Johnston. Um, Tenoyap CM, Tenoyap Siite, Yuan Hat Finsqualowin, Joel Queen Sna, Tenachin Kla, Aslahan Okumeo. Um, I'd just like to welcome everyone, welcome everyone here today. It gives me good feelings in my heart to see you all in the audience. My name is Joel Johnston. I come from the village of Aslahan, just over in the Squamish Nation. And I'm very excited to be here with you today. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to be the MC for the duration of this event. Um, we ask that you please mute your electronic devices at this time until the ceremony has concluded. I would like to start by respectfully acknowledging that we are on the unceded Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish Nation territories, the ancestral and traditional territories. Um, that we are gathered on here today. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our special guests from our host nations, Chief Jen Thomas of the tsleil Nation, Halakton, Aaron Nelson Moody, Austin Harry from the Squamish Nation, oh, sorry, and Master Carvers, Dempsey Bob, Stan Bevan, and Lionel Grant, to Tamahu, Tamara, Derek, Lardy, Lady Gould, Limos Gould, Lardy, Hinami Ha Ta, Lardy, Taningmo Clay, Bridie London, Chancellor Carlene Thomas, to Board Chair Don Avison, to MC ECU intern. President Trish Kelly and MLA, Joan Phillip. To all the ECU students, staff, and faculty who join us, and of course, to Brenda Crabtree, who worked so hard to bring this totem pole to the ECU. And to Kayola Morewood, Sydney Pickering, and Zoe Laycock of the Aboriginal Gathering Place, who supported Brenda in this work and have been central to bringing us all here today. Thank you for being a part of this momentous occasion. I would also like to thank our generous contributors, the Government of British Columbia, the First Peoples Cultural Council, Native Northwest, the Native Growth Foundation, and our media partner, the Georgia Strait, as well as Vita Fubister and Tim Van Beeson, Chief Janice George and Buddy Joseph who are in attendance here today, and many other generous, don generous oh, sorry, donors who contributed to the campaign. We are here for the unveiling of the Pacific Song of the Ancestors totem pole created by Master Carvers Dempsey Bob, Stan Bevan, and Lionel Grant, in collaboration with a number of artists and carvers in their respective communities. This is a very special moment, and you'll hear this poll is the works of many years, many communities, and many individuals, including Bender Kabchu, who was with us here today, and the Aboriginal Gathering Place at Emily Carr, who are hosting this event. Before we get our first look at the totem pole it is, and its new home, we have some honored guests in attendance who will be providing for remarks. First, I'd like to call upon a couple of cultural witnesses um, cultural witnesses are very important as it continues the oral tradition that we have within Indigenous communities. Um, so I'd like to call upon MLA Joan Phillip.
If I could please call Shiloh Mitchell to witness this event, could you please stand up? Great, thank you. Each of you is asked to bear witness to this ceremony so that you may share your experience, reflection, and connection to what has transpired at the end of this ceremony. I would now like to call upon Slaywatooth Elder Carlene Thomas, Chancellor of Emily Carr University, and Arts and Design to speak. What I said to you, my respected ones, the feelings I have are really good. I feel really happy to see you and to be with you here today. And as our host said, I am the chancellor here at Emily Carr University and just thanking you again for joining us today. As you'll hear from other esteemed guests this afternoon, there are many reasons for the Pacific Song of the Ancestors totem pole is special. For a lifelong educator like me, one of the primary reasons is what it re represents, an investment in our students. All of us at Emily Carr share something in common. We believe in serving students. We believe that empowering their education, wellness, and success is a key part of building a better world. As you'll hear, that goal animated the career of Brenda Crabtree, who worked tirelessly on this and many other projects and led Aboriginal programs at Emily Carr University for more than 20 years. That goal was also on the minds of our master carvers, Dempsey Bob and Stan Bevan, who brought student carvers and on board to help create this magnificent totem pole. In fact, the Pacific Song of the Ancestors was first conceived as a way of honoring the work at the Aboriginal Gathering Place and Emily Carr University has done to connect with Indigenous students in Northern BC. In partnership with Coast Mountain College and the Frida Dicing School of Northwest Coast Art. For students, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, this work of art represents decades of connection building and outreach in service of a broader, more inclusive community. All the people who worked on this project and all of us who work here commit to this work because we believe in you. Because we see your talents, your drive, your thoughtfulness. We see your seriousness and your heart. You deserve a learning culture that matches your promise, a learning culture that matches your range and your passion. All of us here today, in our own ways, in our own communities, are committed to contributing to such a culture. That is the larger project I see reflected in this work of art. It's the larger project that drives us to carve, to create, to read, to teach, to write, to talk, and to listen. It is a project of recognizing and honoring our differences, as well as what we have in common. It's a project of building and strengthening interconnection and of fostering communication and collaboration. It's a project we devote ourselves to as a way of investing in you, our students. I hope you see yourselves reflect, reflected in this vision of the future as we see this vision reflected in you. Thank you so much for your time, for taking the time to be here today. Next, I'd like to, we've had some changes here. Um, so what I'll do right now is uh, send you my elected chief's regrets. Chief Dan Thomas of the Slowatuk Nation had an emergency come up. So she's asked me to step into her place. And so I'll just continue what I started earlier. Awesome, neat, siya. I tennis gwaluin, quit see, quit snale ihui, anta ansahalot, anta mana sentalia, i quaslahot siam. 
So what I said was, my respected ones, the feelings I have inside are really good to see you and to be here with you today. I introduce myself to you with my ancestral name. I carry the name Ansachalot. I shared a little bit of my family tree with you. We do that for a number of reasons, but the most important is that it informs you, the audience, that I know who I am and I know where I come from. My parents are Deanna George and the late hereditary chief Ernie George, or Iggy, as his friends called him. My grandparents are, both, both sets of my grandparents have passed on. My paternal grandparents are the late hereditary chief John L. George and Lillian, or Dolly, as her friends called her. My maternal grandparents are the late Stan Joseph from the Squamish Nation and Caroline Thomas Nee Joseph Nee Trimble. And she comes from the Snanaimo, the Nanaimo people on Vancouver Island and Kinkoleth, the Niska people up in the Nass Valley. And just raising my hands here, it's a gesture of welcome here in Coast Salish territory. Hi, Sepka, thanking all of you. Amit Sepwit Wheel, I'm welcoming you here to the homelands and waters of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Slaughter people. So welcome. Do I call? <laughs> Thank you, Carlene Thomas. I would like to call upon Halacton, Aaron Nelson Moody, and Austin Harry from the Squamish Nation. Um, we'd like to welcome you uh, to our friends and relatives who are here for the great work we're celebrating. Um, so pleased to see our, our dear leader, Carlene, come up here, uh, speak as a, a leader of our communities, a leader for, for our families. We're sort of makers. We, we're more comfortable sitting in a room by ourselves making stuff than we are <laughs> standing up on stage. But we wanted our ancestors who are gathered here who are wondering what's happening today. We wanted them to, to know that you're, you're here and welcome in our territories, that you're, you're friends and family from a variety of places, but we want to introduce you to our ancestors in a way that they'll, they'll hear from the afterlife. Uh, so we'll be sharing a, a, a few songs with you, but we, we mostly want to know, or want you to know that you're so welcome here. And it's such a beautiful day to celebrate this beautiful work. And the beautiful work that's been done physically, but also the beautiful work of these people who've shared so much of their culture with the young ones. If you speak to any of these people, they're rushing from one place to another this week, helping community. They're spread thin. So they've also made time to prepare the next generation to do this work in such a, such a beautiful and generous way. So we, we'd just like to honor them today. I'll see them. Oh, oh,
here now. Let's hear. Thank you, Halactin, Splash, and Austin. And now Chancellor Thomas and Brenda Cabchi will unveil the Pacific Song of the Ancestors Totem Pole. Carvers of the Pacific Song of the Ancestors will now carry out the Carver's Dance. One more song in this town. Um, our first song is a wolf song. It's our fan song. Second one was a ptarmigan song. And the ptarmigan song, they used to, uh, the women would sing this song and use their handkerchiefs. <clears throat> and they used to scare the ptarmigan up the hill and they would set a snare like in a circle and the ptarmigan would dance up and be snared. That's how the Talcons caught them. <laughs> this last song, we want to balance it with uh, a raven song. 
it was our humane press of my nation. So, and this this song is my my grandfather's brother's song. Anyways, when he was young, he had lots of girlfriends, and people were talking about him. So he made up this song and said, "Leave me alone." God, give me this time on, short time on earth to be happy, so leave me alone. I just want to say thank you to Brenda, my Maori brothers and sisters, and my sisters, oh, and my wife too, for their support, and for the university too, to believe in our art, believe in our culture. Art is important because art is what makes us human. Makes us people. Art is what makes us civilized. And our art is who we are. It's in here. We say this day is one more time for our ancestors. I did it for my mom and my grandparents. <coughs> Madhu, thank you. Yeah. 
Dempsey Bob for sharing those beautiful words and songs with us. I'd like to invite Tamaho Tamare up to the stage. え、ねいろ Squamish. Slaver tooth, to nae te mihi mai hoa atu, mai a mātou, nā Māori i haramai ki te āwhina i wā tātana tuakana, taina, <coughs> o roto o Teres BC, ki te whakairo i tēnei pau, i waina nui a tātou, e hei tū nei, ki ru nei tōkou tau whenua, i te rani nei. Tēnei te mihi nui, me tō mātou, mai mai aroha, i nā tīpuna, E whakaara nei, ki nei te pau nei. Tēnei tātou, wa whakai hui hui mai nei, ki te aha, ki te whakanui, i te pau, i nā mahi, a nā tohuna e toru nei, e noho nei, i te taha o tēnei rana tira wahi nei. Nāna nei te kaupapa, i whakaara ake, hei aha, hei pai na mō tātou, te iwi. Nō rera e hika mā, tēnei te mihi mai o ake, mai a mātou o toi Māori a Aotearoa, a hakoa nga iwi huhua, kai waina nui i a mātou. I tēnei rā, tēnei te haramai nei, ki te tauwhi, i te kaupapa, tō mātou rana tira nei, <coughs> tō awhakairo, tō huna awhakairo, o roto o Aotearoa, Lionel Grant. Tēnei te haramai nei, te tautoko i a koutou. Ladies and gentlemen, kia ora. Greetings. These are our people made up of many tribes from Aotearoa who have come over here to support our Tohuna Whakairo, Lionel Grant, to witness the unveiling of this magnificent totem pole carved by our brothers and sisters from the Northwest Terrace BC. In 1991, the former General Manager of Toi Māori Aotearoa, Māori Arts New Zealand, Gary Nicholas, had the opportunity to connect with Dempsey Bob. Ever since then, we've had the connection with the Indigenous peoples right up in the northwest coast of America and Canada. It goes beyond that, beyond our whakairo art form, beyond what you see on the wood, we share our art forms, because what are we doing? We're uplifting ourselves as indigenous artists, separated by water of the Pacific Ocean. Our ancestors were able to traverse that mighty ocean 
of the Pacific and find their way back home. Stories have come through from the Northwest connecting us. Some of our ancestors crash landed on your lands. They nursed them back to health. They brought up their well-being. They even fixed their canoes. But why go back to our islands when we could share our culture, our language, and definitely our arts? This is why Toi Māori is here today. This is why the representatives are here today. Because of what we call te aho mutsuna kore, the thread that binds us through our arts, through our culture, through our language, is why we are here, to uplift our people and institutions such as Emily Carr. We had the privilege in 2014 to meet Brenda Crabtree, who brought with her a whole lot of resources, a whole lot of people with her to connect through our arts. And this is why we are here today, looking at our future partnerships, how we can do that, but at the same time, remembering who our people are. We have to take our tribes with us. We have to take our nations with us in order for us to move forward. <clears throat> and how we do that back in Aotearoa in New Zealand is through the well-being of our arts, whether it be through wood, visual arts, clay, stone, bone, our traditional waka form, which we've shared with your cultures since 2009 the exchanges that happen between our artists to keep our connections alive. That which happened thousands of years ago, and we're still doing it today. We are only following in the footsteps of our ancestors. And so we are honoured to be here amongst you, Ehikama, the three nations that reside here on these lands, Musqueam, Squamish, Slavertooth, I've all had the pleasure of meeting you on our byways, on the highways that our ancestors were using <coughs> to travel up and down the northwest coast. And we share this with you, our Tohuna, our Master Carver, Lionel Grant, who has come over to express his knowledge and wisdom in amongst great friends that we've established from so long ago. So, from the organisational view of Toi Māori, we look forward to continuing this relationship with the Emily Carr University. Nō reira, uri nō tō tātou nō whare, te nā koutou, te nā koutou, te nā rā tātou katou. Um, thank you so much for your beautiful words and your songs.
The family, Emily Carr University Arts and Design, would like to recognize our Maori guests for honoring us with their gifts of creativity and presence. We will be blanketing them to show them our love and care and respect. Can't fit in my head. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'd now like to call upon Virginia Bob, Linda Bob, Levetta McNeil, who will carry out the Northern Protocol. Thank you. 
just a minute. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, the family here at Emily Carr University would like to recognize Virginia, Linda, and Lavetta for honoring us with their Northern Protocol. We will be blanketing you to show you our love, thanks, and care. Thank you so much. Thank Anderson. you. That was special. I'm on top here of the news. In spirit, our people are looking at. Thank you so much. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce Brenda Crabtree. Brenda retired earlier this year after 23 years with the Aboriginal Gathering Place. As director of the Aboriginal programs at ECU and special advisor to the President on Indigenous, Indigenous Initiatives, <laughs> along with Dempsey, Brenda has been the driving force behind bringing the Pacific Song of the Ancestors to Emily Carr. Brenda belongs to the Spasm Band and has both Inkla, Pamuk, and Stolo ancestry. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you. I, I'm even more emotional now than I was when I walked in the door this morning, and these are really tough acts to follow. Um, it's no secret that I've had the best job at Emily Carr for the last 23 years, and as I'm looking out in the crowd, so many of you were part of making that happen for me. I just came to Emily Carr with no real experience in the Emily Carr community and my family supported me and here I am just um, with these amazing community and family connections and for that I thank you. Part of the job included community outreach with Indigenous communities throughout BC and Emily Carr has had a long-standing collaborative exchange with Frida Deesing, School of Northwest Coast Art and Terrace named after Frida, Dempsey's carving teacher and mentor. Frida attended our Vancouver School of Art and Dempsey wanted to honor Frida with this totem pole. The pole began its journey in Terrace. It started with a phone call with Dempsey as so many projects do, telling me there was a large red cedar log that would be great for a totem pole for Emily Carr. And so it began. The log was delivered and prepped in Stan's carving studio. And it was decided that it was imperative to have a Maori component to the pole. And that imperative component, of course, was Lionel Grant. It's an honor and a privilege to have these precious connections to our Maori family and our Northern family bound by the waters of the Pacific Ocean. It's a testimony to the importance of connection, reconnection, and collaboration for Indigenous artists. The project focused on engaging Indigenous artists in the promotion and perpetuation of intergenerational cultural knowledge 
and traditional and contemporary art forms. The totem pole embraces the transfer of cultural and artistic knowledge to current and future generations. I want you to hear more about the totem pole story and the design elements from the carvers. So I'm gifting my extra four minutes of the speech to Dempsey Bob, <laughs> and you will appreciate this after. Um, lastly, as we approach National Truth and Reconciliation Day, and honor the children and survivors of residential school. I want to send health, healing, and love to those of you who are on the path of truth and reconciliation. And I dearly thank you for supporting me. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I'd like to call upon the Talatan Tinglet Master Carver, Dempsey Bob. Dempsey, along with Stan Bevan and Ken McNeil, is co-founder of the Frida Diesing School of Northwest Coast Art in Terrace, BC. Welcome, Dempsey. It's uh, emotional. <laughs> I just want to thank uh, Brenda. I want to thank Emily Carr. I want to thank my family, my sisters, my nephew, Stan Bevan. I was lucky that I was fortunate that um, I had my grandparents and they told me the stories and my mother, because they were only the only ones that believed that I could do it, that I could do it as an artist. And I'd also like to thank the Maori, our Maori brothers and sisters, because I know the art road, the art path is a struggle. It's always a struggle. It's good, but it's bad too sometimes. But when it's good, it's really good. <laughs> I think that's why we do it. <laughs> but I was lucky, you know, to have people like Brenda in our lives too, to support the artists. We can't do it alone. And my wife, Margaret, and my daughter, and my son, my grandkids, especially my sisters and my nephews, supported our dance group, supported me always when I needed help. I didn't do it all by myself. I was lucky I was born into a family of artists too, because my grandmother was an artist. My grandmother's father was a carver from Huna, Alaska. He was Clinkett. My grandmother's Clinkett. My great-grandmother was a weaver. Also, my, on my grandfather's side, my grandfather was Johnny Sincoots Carlick. His family were song composers and storytellers. They were also healers. So that knowledge was there and I was lucky I, I listened. I only wish I listened more. <laughs> I had the privilege of working with um, Lionel Grant, I call him the, the Michelangelo of the Maoris. And somebody was bugging me, they kept saying to me like, who are you, who are you? And I said, I'm Dempsey Bob. And he said, what do you do, you're a carver. I'm a carver, I told him. 
And the guy knew Lionel really well. And finally, what I said, I told him, I'm the Lionel Grant of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> then he quit bugging me, he took off. <laughs> but that's the only way I could get rid of him. I feel really good today because we finally got the poll up and it's, it's a beautiful day and I want to thank everybody for coming and witnessing this. Our traditional way is that we always have witness, to witness our deeds, what we've done. And today is a special day because when we raise our totem poles, it's the first time that people see us standing like a tree. And our traditional way is, if it falls, we give it back to Mother Nature. And we say our great-great-grandchildren will carve that. That's what we believe. We just borrowed it. And it was a privilege to work with Lionel because his knowledge and skill, his skill level, it's amazing. And I, I had the privilege of working with the Maoris and they, they kind of, they challenged us. And what they did too, they were spying on us, but we were spying on them too. <laughs> what they did was they, they took it and they sort of twisted it on us, but we did the same to them too, but we didn't tell them. But this, out of this great relationship, though, came this pull and our sharing. Because what we believe, if you share it, you make it stronger. And that's what we did with our brothers and sisters. We try to help each other to be better artists. And what the Maori people gave to us was the goodness, the goodness in our culture, respect, because that's what it means to be Talta. It's the love and respect for your people. And I honor them. I love them. They're our brothers and sisters. We have very similar histories with you know who. But out of this relationship came some very good art from the challenge, the working together. I've been down there 12 times now, I'm trying to quit. It's getting further, <laughs> further and further. <laughs> But I'd like to recognize Derek Claridelli and Rose and Tamo for the hard work. Because artists need support. And why art is important is because art is what makes us human. Art is what makes us civilized. That's why art is important. And artists have always been like the contents of societies. They recorded truths. And that's what a true artist is. I've been just lucky, you know. I've been lucky that I met them. Shared these times, many good times with them. I could talk all afternoon. I think my four minutes is up and she's looking at me. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone for coming and sharing this occasion with us. Thank you very much. Madhu, go to Chish. Thank you, Dempsey. Next, I'd like to call upon Talatan, Tinglet, and Tishman, Master Carver, Stan Bevan. As I mentioned, Stan is the co-founder of the Frida D. Singh School of Northwest Coast Art and Terrace, BC, 
along with Dempsey and fellow artist Ken McNeil. Welcome, Stan. Sim Gigat, Siganak, Bill Wilson. I'd like to start by thanking uh, the, the Squamish, the Musqueam, and Slavatooth. Um, my journey, or my invitation, started 42 years ago. I, I was invited by my uncle, my mentor, to work with him on a totem pole that he was working on in Alaska. And that was my uh, first experience, and I, and I went on to carve many poles after, since then, and leading up to this pole, it was a, a first pole that I was invited to actually carve with Dempsey as an artist myself. And, and it was an honor to work with Dempsey and to create this with Dempsey. And then a, a really big honor to, to, to be able to work with, with Lionel Grant. Um, Lionel is uh, as, as important as my uncle in, in, in New Zealand. He's, uh, he's as, as, as I heard Dempsey say, he's the, the Dempsey Bob of New Zealand, so. <laughs> So, 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 so it was a big, big honor to, to be part of this poll, and 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 I really thank the the university for for for, for allowing this to happen. Um, I'd like to um, uh, recognize some of our uh, assistants and apprentices that that uh, helped us with with the, with this with this poll, uh, starting with my my cousin. Uh, uh, Brian, he's uh, he's been working with me on totem poles for for over a decade, and I, I'd like him to stand just to, to get him to. to, to get it. <laughs> and, and and also Daryl Moore. Daryl Moore is a is a is a, a student of the Freedy Deason School, but also. He says, has many teachers, and one of his teachers is Ken McNeil. <laughs> and, and another big part of, of completing the poll was uh, uh, bringing David Nunn. He was a, he's a Dempsey Bob's son, so I'd like to recognize David as, as, as a big part of helping this poll. <laughs> When, 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 we, when we complete polls, uh, we, we, always, uh, we always have a female uh, helping with the, the finishing, and the, the finishing is the painting. So, so, so I, I, we, we, this, this, this poll, we were, we, we were honored to have a, 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 a master, Mari Weaver, uh, help us with the hair. She, she did all the hair and, 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 and um, and, and placed it in for us. So, so, so I'd like to, to honor Tungy, and can please stand up, Tungy, for, for, for helping us complete the poll. <laughs> this, 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 this poll represents a, a lot of things. It, it represents uh, the, the journeys to New Zealand, the, the, the journeys to, to, to British Columbia and, and, um, and the, the connections that, that, that it, through the University of Emily Carr and, and uh, the Frida Deasing School and then Brenda Crabtree in the, in the middle, pivoting all these, all these uh, bringing all these artists together and, and, and cultures together. So, um, so, I, so I, I, I believe it's, it's this journey, but it, it's, it's. But I like to also think, and more importantly, that it's it's a, a part of Brenda's legacy for the university and the artists of BC. So, so thank you very much, Brenda. So. And, uh, just, 
it, it's, it was a great experience, and I love sharing sharing the being being able to work with uh, MC and Lionel. It, it was a it was a, a very a learning experience, and uh, and I and I I wish many more experiences to to come. So so thank you everyone for being here, and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. And now I'd like to call Maori and Pakahi Master Carver Lionel Grant. Lionel has recognized as one of the foremost artists in many discipline, disciplines he practices. He is the artist behind the middle third of the Pacific Song of the Ancestors pole. Please welcome Lionel. Kotefakariki, Kotefakariki, Tukua Maikia Piri, Tukua Maikia Tata, Kiaka Maiki Rumokita Pai Pai Poto, Homai Tafiti. I'd like to start this whole thing like as if I was starting a carving. I don't know what I'm, it's going to turn out like. I'm just jamming. Um, I know there's been a lot of thank yous. Um, and I just told to call all those people that have thanked all the people that need to be thanked. And then if I start, I'm going to miss somebody out, so I'm not going to thank anybody from this point on. <laughs> <sighs> but I will thank my whanaunga that have come so far from Aotearoa to express our tikanga, the mana of our Māori people, and bestow it upon this occasion. Um, um, I was almost in tears a couple of times with what these people have been saying, and, and they're my whanaunga, I know them. Um, but anyway, we got, we got a saying at home that you don't make chisels with your, uh, you don't make carvings with your mouth. You make them with the toki, you make them with the fao. And so, ko te fao te kōrero, ko te kōrero te fao, ko te toki te kōrero, ko te kōrero te toki. The chisel and the ads speak volumes for you in what you do. So I pray that what I've done here not only um, augments what has already been laid down by Dempsey and Stan, but also does my culture proud. And that's all I can ask. Um, but if I was to translate what that chisel of mine has said, it might talk about that ancient murmur of, of our ancestry, that it transcends place, time, and physicality. And that chisel might also talk about our culture, our teachers. Dempsey's teacher, Frida, I met her up in Finland, had the honour of meeting her. Um, my, my tutor, John Tayapa, who's a relation of Derek's. Um, so every chisel blow that went onto this rako here is a reminder of our teachers, of our mentors, of our elders, of our contemporary artists that have worked alongside us and inspired us. And another thing that that chisel might be talking about is the joy of working with friends, working with other capable artists. And just a little aside, the, the, the ads that I used on this carving was given to me way back by Dempsey Bob, or an iteration of it, because it broke it, and I had to make another one, and to me, to me, to me. <laughs> but it's worked like you wouldn't believe. And that, that, Toki, that axe, has spread its way around the Pacific, over into Hawaii. Now it's down in Aotearoa, and all the young carvers are picking up that same ads, that same style of ads, and using it now where we shied away from using that style of ads when I was training. And now we're using that ads that Dempsey gave us. So it's not only this camaraderie in the wood we carve, but it's in the tools that we, that we carry. 
and Stan gave me a chisel last time I was up here. That thing has been thrashed for the last year that I've had it. It's a, it's a special little hahai that's made uh, in Japan. So that sheer joy of working with real artists on a real project for a real purpose is, is amazing. And then maybe that chisel again, he'd be talking about things like cre creating a, an artwork in an environment that teaches art, that practices art, that celebrates art, an art school. So on many, many, many levels, that chisel has had been talking about these things as it's been creating that poke. And um, Tamaho expressed uh, a beautiful whakatauki that, that came out some years ago. It's a proverb. And it goes, he toi whakairo he mana tangata. And it just says that, you know, where there's artistic excellence, when you do your very, very best, you open your heart to what you're doing, it'll command respect. It'll, it'll command the, the gaze of those who, who look at it. And so on that note, I'm not going to drag it on too much longer. And I'm um, kia ora tātou. Thank you. Thank you, Lionel. I'd now like to call upon Kayula Morwood, Manager of the Aboriginal Programs at ECU, Sydney Pickering Aboriginal Programs Coordinator, who will present gifts to the artists, and to Brenda.
family would like to recognize Dempsey Bob, Stan Bevan, and Lionel Grant, as well as Brenda Crabtree for the generosity, artistry they've shown in creating this work. Their blankets recognize the love and care that the family has for them and the respect as well. OCM, Hoichka. Thank you all. I will ca now call upon Ms. Joan Phillip, MLA, for Vancouver at Mount Pleasant to speak. All right. Is Greece Damesian? Uh, that name comes from my Coast Salish relatives at the at Tsleil-Waututh. And I just want to thank my Coast Salish relatives for the opportunity and honor for witnessing uh, this work on our territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. I particularly want to thank my uh, my dear relative. Uh, when she was talking about her her grandpa, her grandpa and my grandfather, Chief Dan George, were were brothers, and I used to watch Grandpa Dan George carve canoes on the waterfront. So it was just really touching. This event, this event is so significant in many ways. I want to mention that uh, I already knew Stan Bevan. I had the honor and opportunity of unveiling one of his poles that he carved for New Bechuan in China because Bechuan, old Bechuan, was destroyed by an earthquake. So the pole was commissioned and I helped unveil it. So. <laughs> Seeing another one of your polls is so beautiful. The thing that makes this so significant, though, is we have an indigenous relative across the water sharing that vision. Art is so important. And it's such a beautiful visual depiction of who we are. Because really, I... I I pray and I hope that when you see that poll, you'll be inspired to learn about who we are. Because I know everything about our colonizer, but this, is, this time of reconciliation is, is so wonderful because now you have an opportunity to learn who we are. And lifting us up in this way, sharing <clears throat> with everyone, our art, it lifts us all up. When you lift us up, you lift all of us up. It's going, because it's going to take all of us to reconcile what has happened to us and to make it right. So I just want to thank the Emmy Carr University for allowing me to come here and witness this event and share with you what I'm going to take to my constituents. So why Limnum? Haishkasyam. Thank you, Ms. Phillip. I will now call upon Emily Carr University Board Chair Don Avison, King's Council, to speak. Well, good afternoon, all. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to be here with you 
uh, this afternoon. And I have to tell you, I expected this to be an extraordinary day. It's more than that for me. I was sitting over there uh, having an uncharacteristic emotional moment. I think for those that know me well, that doesn't happen that often, but I was sitting there thinking there are moments in your lifetime where there are some events that become seared into memory that you don't forget until you draw your last breath. This will be one such day for me. Uh, and I'm honored to be in the presence of those who have led this project and to be in the presence as well of all of those who have assisted in bringing uh, this day uh, to fruition. Uh, it is an extraordinary thing and it comes two days before the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation in this country. Um, I wish we had the opportunity, and I, and I think in part with the availability of technology, we'll have the opportunity uh, to share what happened here today with other people beyond the events that are unfolding right now. I was also sitting there thinking, uh, I wish I had been here today with my grandchildren so they would have had the opportunity to see uh, what took place here today. Uh, if you see me with a couple of very small ones running around uh, talking about the poll over the course of the coming days, uh, it's likely Noah and Faith than Jack. Uh, having Jack here today would have been a bad idea because he can't get by more than about one or two minutes without asking questions. And that's what I want him to do. And so I look forward to that opportunity probably someday soon. Uh, to explain to him as best I can the significance of what happened here today. Um, Brenda, you've heard so much already today in relation to the contributions that, that you have made uh, to help us come forward, but I think that expression of love for you from this institution and from those here present is about so much more than this. It's about the extraordinary contributions that you have made uh, to Emily Carr over the course of your career here, and that's a relationship that I think will continue for a very, very long time. The pool represents <clears throat> um, the work of many over a long period of time, from the time that this was uh, first talked about uh, through the carving of the pool to the raising of the pool and its unveiling here today. <clears throat> It's a symbol of the spirit of collaborative, intergenerational, indigenous material practice that animates the mission of the Aboriginal Gathering Place here at MLA Carr, an expression of the ongoing work uh, between the Aboriginal Gathering Place and Indigenous artists and communities throughout the province and indeed internationally. Uh, and I can't express enough uh, how honored we are uh, to have those of you have, that have traveled such great distances to be part of this uh, today. I will remember that always. The story of M. Blake Carr over the course of the last century has been uh, one of creative innovation. And I think this is a profoundly significant threshold point in our history. 2025 will be the 100th anniversary of the evolution from the Vancouver School of Art through to Emily Carr. And I think this day will be remembered always as a critical point as we look to the past and look to the future. Um, I was gonna talk a little bit about some of the history of Emily Carr and artists of the past. I don't think this is the day for that. We'll have opportunities as we enter upon uh, that 100th uh, anniversary of the institution. Um, I wanna focus entirely on the significance of the event that's happened uh, here today. I will remember it always. I think part of our obligation uh, is to speak of these things, uh, and I will. Uh, I thank all of you for the opportunity to be in your uh, presence. I'm honored by it. And on behalf of Emily Carr, we thank you so deeply uh, for the contributions that you have made in this extraordinary event today. Masicho. Thank you, Chair Aviason. 
I'd now like to call upon Emily Carr's university interim president and vice chancellor, Trish Kelly, to speak. Thank you, Joelle, and hello, everyone. As Joelle said, I'm Trish Kelly, the interim president and vice chancellor, Emily Carr, and it's a profound honor to stand before you today having this chance to speak with you around this once in a lifetime occasion, around this um, installation of this exquisite and beautiful outstanding work, the Pacific Song of the Ancestors Totem Pole. As you've heard from Julie and our guests, this incredible work of art wouldn't exist without the dedication of so many people. First and foremost, our esteemed guests, Master Carvers, Dempsey Bob, Stan Bevan, and Leno Grant, and of course, Brenda Crabtree, who's nearly 25 years with the university, um, placed her right at the center, at the heart of the institution, but also whose career has defined the way we think about community outreach and partnership with indigenous communities, organizations, and individuals throughout the province and internationally. Brenda, you're a hard act to follow, and we love you so much. These individuals were supported by many, many others staff here at Emily Carr, and I specifically want to give a shout out to Kula Morewood and um, Sydney Pickering for all the work that they've done. Also, um, the work of Layla and Zoe in the exhibition. I want to really express gratitude to former presidents here in the audience, Jillian Sadal, and also Ron Burnett for all the work and energy they've brought into reconciliation at the institution. Artists from Terrace in New Zealand, the government of BC, our partners at Coast Mountain College and the Frida Diesling School, and the list goes on. And I'm looking at so many people here in the audience today who had such a vital role in this work and bringing this to Emily Carr. The partnerships forged and the relationship fosters were central to this beautiful work arriving here today. It is this emphasis on relationships and partnerships that I've been thinking a lot about lately in relation to the future of Emily Carr and in particular, to how we can be better stewards for reconciliation. For Emily Carr, as for other post-secondary institutions, reconciliation is a mandate. It is um, something that we are required to engage with. Caring for our relationships with ind indigenous colleagues and communities, including our host nations, is expected. But too often, as settlers and newcomers on this land, we show up in a transactional or needy way to demonstrate we're fulfilling that mandate. And of course, that's not meaningful reconciliation. That's not where meaningful reconciliation happens. Meaningful reconciliation happens by showing up as a way of being and by doing so without worrying about what Emily Carr gets from that. Meaningful reconciliation begins by asking, what can we offer? How can we provide a resource or a service without angling or looking for something in return. This poll is amazing not only for its artistry. It's amazing because it shows years of investment in relationships with the Frida Diesling School, with Frida Diesling herself as an alumna of the university, and it brings to life the relationships between the AGP and indigenous communities across the province and across the Pacific. And it's an embodiment of what can happen when we look at relationships, not as acts of reciprocity, but as opportunities to uplift and support, to empower self-determination, and to throw this university's resources and assets into the work of being of service. Not because it's a mandate, not because of what we receive, but because what is created is a gift for future generations. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, President Kelly. Finally, I'd like to call upon our witnesses. Joan Phillip, if you could please speak about what you saw today. Uh, I just want to... Uh, Thank Emily Carr University for bringing us all together here today 
I've witnessed, I, this is the first time I've been in the building and the moment you walk in the doors, you know where you are. You know you're in um, Coast Salish territory. So I was just so pleased to be invited to this event. Again, the artist, Limlim, I, I did a little carving when I was younger. It was, the carving was about this by this. <laughs> but to see that is just spectacular. So I hold my hands up to you, Limlim. Thank you, Ms. Phillip. I'd like to call upon our last witness, Shiloh Mitchell. Uh, kia ora tato. Um, I would just like to acknowledge the uh, wonderful uh, artwork that has been created by these master carvers and that uh, my whanonga line all over there. Uh, wonderful to see you as always. And uh, for our whanonga from uh, Aotearoa, uh, kia ora whanau. Um, and for everyone here to bear witness to such a masterful piece of artwork and that it stands proudly here in the Emily Carr uh, University. Kia ora. And I'd like to thank everyone for being here to participate in this rare event. It has been my privilege to be here with you today and to learn with you about the incredible story of this remarkable work of art. Thank you to our community members from near and far for your contributions and collaborations. And thank you to our host nations for your generosity and support. I will now be undertaking a brief break for official photography. While we do so, we'd be grateful if everyone would join us on level two to enjoy some light refreshments and take some time to walk through the exhibition titled Pacific Song of the Ancestors, which accompanies the ceremony. Pacific Song of the Ancestors is curated by the ECU's very own Zoe Laycock with the assistance of Leila Berg. Please take care to use the stairs, stairwell D, or use the elevator to access level two. In 15 minutes, we will be welcoming you back to this level to view the totem pole. Hoichka Hoseam, thank you so much for joining us here today. We'll see you in 15 minutes. Thank you.